Shalom, my friends. Welcome to another video where we systematically dismantle the theology and ideology of pro-Palestinian Muslims who wish nothing but for the destruction of the nation of Israel. Let's get right into it. But they're not going to, they're not, I'm sorry. They can't, they can't do that. Catholics don't do that. I, I grew up around so many Catholics. Like, I, I'd never heard of them being like that. It's usually the event. I didn't even read the Quran, so what? Um, hey, there's no issue. You can, you can read the Quran. You can, you can read Harry Potter books to it. We're not judging here. So just to give a little context, this is before I joined the room. I was uh, in the background basically being a fly on the wall as I listened to these individuals give some explanation of what they thought was sound understanding of the Bible. But uh, we will put them in their place, sure enough. So keep watching because at a certain point, I joined the conversation and put these individuals in their place, not only on the Bible, but also on their own Quran. Here's the but thing it, with the Quran. It's such an intricate book because you need the Tafsir, which is the explanation, and then you also need the uh, Shana Nuzul, which is like the historical references as to why certain verses came. So you, just by reading the Quran, is nothing. You Don't didn't you, study it. You just read you it. Ask. Remember that for later. That will be very important as we get into the explanation, the Tafsir of the Quranic verses. Superman? Go to your Superman? What, brother? You have Supermod? Um, I do. Yes. What do you want me to do? Uh, big how screen. Do, do me, big screen. Okay. How do I do that? What, oh, okay. Hold Tap on. Tap on gonna... me, and then you'll see like an uh. uh thing Is Kexi not around? No, no he's, he's eating lunch. He's eating oh. lunch. Why am I doing a shitty job? I'm so sorry, you guys. No, you're not, okay. Goldie. Stop it. Okay, just tap how do on, I do this? Tap okay. on me, tap on my box, and then you'll see like a little uh, on the top, right? You'll see a little hey, stand, yeah. Oh my oh, god, look what so, I did, you guys. Um, <laughs> oh, here you go, King <laughs> Jing. Go like here, here you go, here you go, ready? King Jing. So this guy is reading from the King James Version of the Bible. It looks like this is Micah chapter 3. Um, so yeah, let's hear his explanation of this. It was Micah 3, <laughs> 9, 12. Hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, who despise justice and distort all that is right, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. Her leaders judge for a bribe, her priests teach for a price, and her prophets tell fortunes for money. Yet they look for the Lord's support and they say, is not the Lord among us? No disaster will come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion will be plowed like a field. Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble. The temple hill a mound grown over, overgrown with thickets. So, of course, this is written during the first temple period before the first temple had even been destroyed. That was the context of Mike, Micha, Micah, the prophet who was a prophet before even the first temple was destroyed, which way predated Islam, like even more so than the second temple, obviously. So this was a prophecy about the destruction of the first temple. But of course, Muslims are using this to try and argue that uh, Jews aren't allowed to live in the land of Israel or something, or that Zionism is, uh, ironically, it, it proves the other point that Zion is, you know, virtually synonymous with Jerusalem, as I get into later. Um, but of course, they try to make this lie that Zionism has nothing to do with the Bible, when in reality, this verse in Micah, these verses in Micah actually prove the opposite. <laughs> very self-destructive to their purpose in trying to demonize Zionists as something that is not inherent to the Hebrew Bible. Then we have, hold on, we got, and I could bring out Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9, which also come at you guys. Uh, right, New Testament verses. Of course, I'm a Jew. I don't believe in the New Testament, but of course this is, it's been used by the black Hebrew Israelites to try and claim that the Jews aren't re the real Jews, you know, even though we have the receipts to prove it, you know, we've always claimed to be Jews throughout the entirety of the last 2,000 years of exile, but what do our, you know, who, who, who wants to trust what the Jews have to say, even though we have the receipts to 
prove it because we're the only group of people who have any sort of historical demonstration of such. But sure, let's believe people who claim that they don't know their identity and because they don't know their identity, they have a better uh, chance of being the real Jews. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I lost brain cells saying that sentence. And you probably lost some hearing me say it. So, anyway. Um, let's see. We got Romans 9, 6. But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descendant from Israel belong to Israel. Then there's... Hold on. Let me, let me get out of here real quick. See, I love... I love reading this stuff, you know, I, I I love reading it. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce its fruits. Talking to Beni Israel. So, right, he loves reading scripture, taking things out of context, reading from New Testament scriptures that Jews, by and large, don't even accept, including myself. I mean, but I guess their purpose here is to try and uh, convince uh, Christian Zionists that they shouldn't really be supporting Jews because Jews are a bunch of, you know, <laughs> they'll, they'll use any sort of way to, you know, all of the anti-Jewish tropes that have been done throughout the millennia, they will cling to that, you know, using the New Testament for the same, you know, you're the synagogue of Satan, anything they can find, Jews are liars, Jews are anything, blood libels, whatever they can get their hands on, right? It's just a free-for-all of like, let's contextually abuse anything to make the Jews look like demons or something, which is obviously despicable and just disingenuous. I mean, most Christians would even disagree with these interpretations. Then I'm a... Uh... I mean, also, I mean, the evangelicals, they don't, they don't support Israel because they like Israel. They support Israel because their end of the times prophecy says that they have to support Israel so that everyone in Israel can be annihilated. So, like, <laughs> I swear, it's like... He finds that very amusing. Um, look, there's a kernel of truth to that, but, I mean, it's not like... I mean, you have this theoretical idea, then you have the Palestinian Muslims like Hamas going and actually physically annihilating us or attempting to, right? So, I don't know. <laughs> Half a dozen, right? Uh, <laughs> six, whatever. No, that's what I don't understand. I always wonder, like, do you know they don't want to play nicely with you? Like, you're going to hang out with them and you're going to support them, but they do not want to play nicely with you guys. Like, I feel bad for them. Yeah, like, when you oh, ask the rabbis... When you ask the rabbis, how does it make you feel to accept support from somebody who literally wants your unalivement? They say, we don't believe that. That's their fate. So we'll take the support. We'll take the money. We don't care. Yeah, and there's some truth to that. Like, we don't believe that, obviously, the Christian beliefs are, you know, this idea that we're some sort of, like, antichrist, uh, you know, whatever thing they believe in. We believe in the idea of the coming of the true Messiah, you know, the the temple being reestablished and, you know, that's what our expectation is. So if they also want that, but they have this expectation that it's going to be some antichrist, I think even Muslims believe that about the Dajjal. So like, whatever, it's like I said, it's like six, half a dozen, whatever. It's <laughs> if, if it's kind of, yes, it's not the same uh, belief, but it's similar goals and that's, I mean, whatever. I, I I don't see how this helps the case against Christian Zionism because that's what they want anyway. So, whatever. I know thy works in tribulation oh. and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Damn. And then there's Revelation. You brought up the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. He went for the jugular. He went for the jugular, and I'm here for it. I mean, She's here for it. She loves demonizing Jews. Gotta love it. You know, these peace-loving Muslims on this TikTok, they really love Jews so much. I mean, this isn't about, it doesn't say Zionists. It says Jews. 
So I don't know. When they double speak and try to say that they, we, we don't hate the Jews, we just hate the Zionists. Think about what that actually means in the context of this conversation that they didn't realize that I was overhearing. So this is what they say behind closed doors. All right, keep going. Yeah, behold, I will make them, uh, behold, I will make Oh, don't stop. Keep demonizing Jews and making up lies about them. <laughs> this, uh, them of the synagogue of Satan, which says they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Talking to Wait, the... Uh, uh, hold up, go back, go back. Two nine? But do lie, but do lie. Just right there, just right there, do lie. And what do these Zionists do? They, they lie. lie. <laughs> so, Wow, I mean, it's like you're quoting from some holy book that you don't believe in. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I don't believe in it either, but okay. <laughs> like, they don't believe in Revelation 2.9. They're Muslims. They don't believe in this stuff. Anyway, seen this type of rhetoric before. Oh, they <laughs> lie so hard. Love they they lie. The Over I time. love debating them. They stay lying. Because it's so easy to bring up these books. But they don't believe in it. They believe in the Exodus and all this shit. Yeah, and you don't believe in it. Again, so... Yeah, you might as well quote the Talmud out of context like some people we know who don't believe in the t authority of the Talmud. So everyone seems to have the same nefarious, silly strategies. Um, and I'm going to call it out till the day I die. I'm Yisrael Chai. We won't stand for the lies. But yeah. Keep playing Those with are the good for, like, the Christian Zionists. Hey, hey, I'm not. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit into the Quran. You feel me? I, that's what I love. I can hear. I can talk about the Quran and Islam all day long. I can talk mm. about it all day. Hey. Let's see if she wants to keep talking about the Quran all day long when I start schooling them on the Quran. Stay tuned. It bothers me. It's never enough. I can talk about it all day, all day. Like I'm not kidding. That's so yes. Do. So, guys, listen to this, right? Uh, I was looking at uh, all the, t like, times that the pro-Israelis would mess up, like that girl in the Burlington conference or this and that, right? And uh, I came up uh, with 24, and I, I started to read, on that day, their tongues and their hands and their feet testify against them as to what they used to do. On that day, Allah will pay them their just due, and they will know that Allah, he is the manifest truth. That's what I came for. This is what I found. Hold on. This is what I found, right? Twenty uh, Skip 26 because it's more off the topic. But here, look at this. 27. O ye who believe, enter not houses than your own without first announcing your presence and invoking peace upon the folk thereof. That is better for you that ye may be heedful. And then 28 says, 28 says, and if ye find no one therein, still enter not until permission hath been given. And if it be set up unto you, go away, then go away, for it is purer for you. Allah knoweth what ye do. And then there's a third verse, but I'm not going to go into that. It's short. But yeah. The thing is, the, the thing is, right now, man. Like, I, I feel bad. I feel bad for for the. You guys, Isaiah, as Israeli wants to come up, and Isaiah is Zion, a Jewish Zionist, I believe, wants to come up. Do you want them to come up? This is me. This is my grand entrance into this uh, den of <laughs> Islamist, uh, you know, extremists who claim you'll see, you'll see the. Uh, lack of respect that they have or the pseudo respect that they have and uh get ready for some fun sure you mean I, I you mean you mean a zionist not a jew a zionist uh, what did i say a jew would know what did I, I don't know how to say it now because we can't just zionist. say zionist just zionist. say zionist. Okay. Zionist. I, israeli zio or zio I, Listen, I, guys this is, this is just me i can't call somebody a zionist jew that is this shalom Shalom, shalom. How are you? 
I don't. I didn't mean to offend you, sir. If, Wait, uh, sorry. For did, some reason, I, my sound doesn't. So notice, they know who I am. They she addressed me as sir, which is respectful. But you'll see. Keep that in mind for the rest of, of this discussion. Now, I apologize. I might fast forward this a little bit because I have some technical difficulties and I was having to get back in and out because I couldn't hear them. Here to be working right now. I might have to come back in. No, we can hear you perfectly. I apologize. I'm going to come back because for some reason the sound is not working. It's not about R and Goldie. It's about he can't, he can't hear us. That's the problem. So, like, Goldie, you don't have to worry about offending him, per se, but we just don't want to equate Judaism with Zionism. So, once again, I've made videos about this in the past, right? Zion, as they just, they just quoted from Micah, right, that discusses Zion, right, whether or not it was a positive or negative connotation, Zion is virtually synonymous with, with Jerusalem, and that is why we have such a tie to the land, which once again pre-exists Islam by over a thousand years. But that's what that's what it's about. And 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 I make a reference to this later in the book of Zechariah. Isaiah says the same thing. Not the same. I'm trying to do. Okay, Wait, I, I think it's oh, just a second. I think it's connecting to my headphones or something. Let me try. Can you hear us? Wait, aren't Can you, you hear us? Good at technology or something? No. I'm sorry, guys. No. Yeah, I can't. Um, I'll try. Oh, no. Maybe I'll. I'll... Okay. All right. The te technical we had you guys missed it. We had a Jewish brother come up today, and he spoke so beautifully. He's um he's anti-Zionist, and he's um he's for the movement. He's such a beautiful human. The only way to be a beautiful human is you have to be uh, anti-Zionist, which basically means that you reject the tenets of the Torah, you know, the Tanakh, where it speaks about Zion, right? It explicitly says here that uh, in Zechariah chapter 8, verses 2 and 3, it says, so said the Lord of hosts, I'm jealous for Zion with great jealousy and with great fury. I am jealous for her. So said the Lord, I will return to Zion and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth and the mount of the Lord of hosts shall be called the holy mountain. This is the concept of Zionism, right? The idea that Jerusalem will be reestablished as the days of old, right? Which is what this whole chapter, this messianic chapter is all about, right? Zechariah chapter 8. Future messianic prophecy that has not been fulfilled, but it is all about Zion. So keeping that in mind. Coins to be offensive towards Jewish people. When you, you know, so Jew Jewish yeah. is offensive because you it's know not the full Jew. It's you know the real, the, mm -hmm. the real name? The so I don't know what they're talking about. The only reason why that would be offensive is if a black Hebrew Israelite or someone who made up this idea that ish means that you're not really a true Jew. Um, the suffix, of course, like there's a Spanish person, not really Spanish. is a British person, not really British. Like <laughs> it's a stupid argument, but that's the only reason why anyone would have any offensive to it, you know, offense take offense to it if you're if you're using it in that way. Yehudim, we're Yehudim. We've always been Yehudim, right? My name's Yehuda. It means, like, literally that's, means praise God, right? It's it's the fourth son of Judah. This is what Jews have always been. We've always claimed to be Jews. We're Jews, Yehudim. You want to use an English term to say Jewish? No problem, as long as you're not emphasizing the ish as though it's some sort of, uh, you know, saying that you're not really the Jews when we've always been claiming to be the Jews. Like, don't make this into a semantic. Once again, I'm losing brain cells saying this. This should be <laughs> whatever. Let's keep let's keep listening. Name and you have the Menablus. They're called Samaritans. And they Samaritans? Have, they're, they're holy places like a mosque and they pray in sujood. Yeah, they do. They do. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but I just. I can't. Like, I am losing brain cells hearing this conversation. This guy's saying that, like, Jews are really Samaritans and he's like, neglecting the idea of... <laughs> I don't know. This is TikTok, my friends. This is the level of, quote-unquote, intellect that we're dealing with here. I don't know, like... So we don't call them Jew or Jewish? For them, they want to call themselves Jewish or Jewish, but it was really coined as a term to be offensive, and then they took it. No, it's in the Hebrew Bible, right? 
Jew. Mordechai was described as a Jew. Mordechai the Jew. That's in the book of Esther. That's literally like the the kingdom of Judah, the Jews. It's it's literally in Zechariah chapter eight. What does it say? It says. So said the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men of all the languages of the nations shall take hold of the skirt of a Jew. It says, Ish Yehudi, right? This is my favorite, when, you know, the, the verse that says, this, this is where the word Jew is here, Yehudi. So it's translated as Jewish man, right? Ish Yehudi, right? Even the, they, they call us Yehud, right, in Arabic. <laughs> so... And once again, this is about the future Messianic age. So biblically, we are called Jews, <laughs> even within the context of the future Messianic age. So Zionism is all packaged in there, right? Right here, Jews are there. This isn't some derogatory term. This is who we are, Yehudim, Jews, Jewish. It's all the same. And made it their own word. But really, let's say, yeah. let's say J gang. Jay I just don't want to offend. I don't want hey. to offend anybody because I love hey. my Jewish brothers and sisters. They're Same. Pretty, they're Only if they don't practice the religion and or they reject the state of Israel. Look, if you want to critique the state of Israel, whatever, but I don't think there's any dogmatic principle that I can find in the Hebrew Bible that says that a state can't exist. If you want to critique this state in some way, that's fine. But don't tell me that there's no biblical basis that, that there's it's like anti the Bible for Jews to have some established governmental system in the land of Israel prior to the coming of the Messiah. And we I've done, you know, Zechariah chapter 12, we've went into regarding that. Um, you can critique the system, but to say that you know that this is the reality, that we're not supposed to have a state, I don't think you can go that far. You want to critique the state? Be my guest. But politically, and as I'll get into later in the video, you're going to have a double standard here if you're going to say that Jews can't have a state, right? Even, you know, from a religious equality perspective, whether or not it's right according to Judaism is a different question than whether or not according to, you know, the idea of Jews having a state when Muslims have, you know, like over 50 states. That's something that we can also discuss. There. Hey, yeah, I love them. Everybody in Brooklyn want to say Wu K. I say Ju K. Z K. Z K. We in Zio York. <laughs> Zio York, right? All those, uh, you know, anti-Zionist, you know, Haredi Jews, right? They all are included in that uh, Zio York situation here so are they really making a distinction between you know because you have you know religious jews who are not so fond of the state of israel right they're lumping all of those people together so this is what you get behind closed doors from muslims so yeah they have their own police and everything hey they scared yeah. what they, i've heard uh, the, the we, police are scared of you me. guys we need to start talking about that way more. Like the fact that I'm just, I've been doing this for 20 years and I just found out just now because Sister Sasha told us that they have their own police force and they have their own, like that is, mm, that's crazy. So I was born and raised in Brooklyn, so I saw it with my own eyes. My husband was raised, oh, you guys know, oh, shit, what's up? You guys know that I'm, I'm married and my husband was raised in Brooklyn. That is awesome. So yeah, this is kind of irrelevant information. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Once again, they're lumping Zionists and Jews as this, you know, nefarious entity in their minds. Um, they're not really making any distinctions here. Food for thought. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, <laughs> his name is his name is his name is Most Death. Have you guys heard of him? Oh, but that's that's the double standard. I don't mind if somebody tells me that you know my you know, uh, like, I, I honestly, I don't care if somebody tells me that I'm a Zionist. That's not an issue. Like, I don't view it as an insult. But the point is that they're trying to make this distinction in their mind between Jews and Zionists. And that's, it's a double standard because they don't even necessarily believe that, right? They're lumping all of the Jews in Brooklyn into Zio York. They're a bunch of Zionists. <laughs> so they want to have their cake and eat it too. 
they don't want to play by any sort of rules. Come on, girl. <laughs> That's hey, my listen, husband. Listen, don't listen, don't listen. hate. New don't York be a big. hater. Listen, don't Brooklyn is hater. big. <laughs> it's big, but it's still small at the same time. Yeah, like hey, um, I've been so I used to go to school in uh. Right, let's see school. if this works this time. You know, here can you hear us? Can Yo, you hear yeah, us, yeah, brother? Hashem, you you I can hear you guys now. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Shalom, shalom. How are you? Glad, glad you're here. Glad you're here. Shalom. How shalom. are you? Are you from Israel? Do you love Israel? Be nice. Be nice. I'm asking. What are you asking? How was your? I said, are you How from was your Israel? day? How was your day? My ancestors are. So yeah, great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Awesome. So, so I'm Palestine. sure you know that. Uh, yeah, we're trying to uh, yeah, get there first. Are. Let's get there first. Pro yeah. Pali or Pro uh, That's what I was Israel? I mean, his name tells it all, but. I mean, this is this is my actual name that my parents gave me, but. Okay. Yeah, I mean, of course, I I mean, like, speaking of, you know, Zionism, right? I believe that this is a part of, you know, just as, you know, Mecca is important to uh, Muslims, Jerusalem is important to Jews, as you just read. Zion is Jerusalem Jer is also okay, important to Muslims and Christians don't, as well. Don't so like, I agree. Like, um, yeah, don't don't compare like the two because because Yehuda, you need to understand that uh, there was no Jewish people in Mecca at the time of Mecca, or there was no Christian people in the. Uh, I think that we're in so yeah, this is the first uh, misstep that this individual has made. I think that from no, what I understand, was, according was, to to what I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there were Jews living in Medina during the time of Muhammad. And I yes, think, there were. And, and I think he he, he took I think he unalived a few of them and, and no, no, took no, them no, out no, of the no, city. no, 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 no. I'll tell you an exact story through. that contradicts that completely because there contradicts that completely. So here's the resources. This is known as the Battle of Kaibar. Um, here it, it describes it. You know, it was a series of skirmishes and sieges in various fortresses and oases. Muslim began their siege, facing a determined and well-organized defense by Jewish inhabitants. So this is sort of like the Muslim perspective of the story. Now, if you go to, you know, more of a historical reference of the story, you have Ibn Ishaq said, the apostle of Allah said, which refers to obviously Muhammad, Kill every Jew you can lay your hands on. So this was within the context of this skirmishes of battles, right, against this particular tribe. Um, so this is the more historically accurate uh, account. You can read this article and dis it describes the Battle of Kaibar. Why did I bring this point up? Well, in the Palestinian Jewish, or, you know, Palestinian Israel debate, oftentimes, you know, they'll say that, uh, you know, there's this uh, collective punishment against the Gazans, and they'll say that, you know, n nothing is, you know, you can't justify what's happening. And I think to a certain degree of nuance, you know, you can critique, like I said, you want to critique the Israeli army, that's fine. But if you're going to argue that, you know, there's this genocide going on or this collective punishment or whatever, and you're a Palestinian Muslim or a Muslim who defends Palestine, you have to recognize that Jews were living in Medina prior to the advent of Islam, before Islam even existed. And what you have is there was Jews who were literally kicked out of their homes and displaced, and you could argue using the same standard of genocide or apartheid or whatever you want to say, you could apply that to what Muhammad did to the Jews in this battle, collective punishment. That's why I'm bringing this up. And I think it's a wonderful point, and I would suggest if you get into this conversation with a Palestinian Muslim or a pro-Palestinian, you know, just Muslim sympathizer, and they're saying that Israel's committing a genocide or whatever, you know, ethnic cleansing, use this point because it comes from their own Quran and they, you'll see, you'll see how I handle this. Uh, a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his name was Ali, Radi Ali Ibn Abi Talib, right? And uh, there was a coincidence where he had lost his shield because he was a warrior and he had written something on the, the inside of the shield 
and uh, when when uh, he went to a market that was owned by a Jewish person, he had seen the shield and without aggression, he, he simply said, let's take it to a court. And uh, he brought a Muslim judge, which he thought it was uh, obviously was gonna be in favor of him when realistically uh, the judge, the Muslim judge asked for proof and Ali ibn Abdul Talib couldn't provide any uh, proofs so what had happened was he ruled in the muslim judge ruled in favor of the jewish person and this is one of the many many uh you know times that muslims had helped right there's omar ibn uh, omar right he was also a companion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who helped the jewish people protected them from those christians or Quraysh that uh, prosecuted them there's the Spanish Inquisition with the Turks. So you can see he's deflecting now and he's not focusing on Jews living in Medina. He's just trying to say that Muslims were so kind to Jews, this typical uh, propaganda narrative to try. He's, he's not even taking responsibility for the fact that Muhammad killed Jews, even though we have evidence of this explicitly here. Um, but we can also go to, so here's the, the Jewish account of this, right? The Jews had been in Medina for centuries before the arrival of Islam. They ran the city's market they, as they did in many Arabian towns. So they were living in Saudi Arabia. They spoke Arabic and appear to have used the Arabic name for God Allah. Even to this day, you, you have uh, Jews who, who do that in Arab, who were the very few who live in Arabic lands since we've been ethnic, ethnically cleansed from from most of the Arab countries. Yet the Jews of Medina simply couldn't accept Muhammad as the new prophet of God. The Jewish religion fundamentally, fundamentally insisted that the age of the prophets was over and that God no longer spoke directly to man, right? No Jews or Christians allowed, right? I put this in this video, Rashida Tlaib wishes you a happy Hanukkah. You should check it out. Please subscribe to the channel, by the way, and give us a like if, if uh, you like what you're seeing um, and share. Because we, we need to get this out. We need to fight this, this propaganda against Jews. It says, eventually, Medina's Jews turned bitterly and publicly critical, um, were accused of treason. And between 624 and 627, two Jewish tribes were exiled from Medina, and the men of a third tribe were massacred, and their women and children enslaved. Collective punishment, my friend. So that's why I'm saying if... They're going, if a Palestinian Muslim is going to go on and on about this collective punishment, whatever, this is just the tip of the iceberg, by the way, because Jews have been collectively punished as demi Sharia law, second class citizens for over a thousand years, right? I did video, this video, I, uh, in this Rashida Tlaib wishes you a happy Hanukkah, I go into that in detail, right? Detail, right? So give this a watch if you haven't already. Um, so, okay, anyway, we're going to keep going on which was under a Khalifa. about al hashir 59 2. that's what i was referring to i don't know if you know the tafsir on that but it uh, says what is he it? is the one who first assault drove forth the people of the book that disbelieved from their homes at the first gathering of forces right basically that he i think the people of the book referred to the jews according to the tafsir i could be wrong i don't know I, this is your book. You can interpret it so, the way so that you what's want. The, what's the name? Al Hashir. Is this a surah? Is this from this the is Quran from the or Quran, or? Quran, but I was looking at some of the tafsir and I saw that you, some. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy to me? I've never heard of a surah called Al Hashir. No so such thing. I don't know. Is a surah a verse or is it a chapter? Because I was saying chapter. The chapter I mean, is a chapter. It, it, the the chapters go based off. Uh, uh, names, right? So and, what is he trying to quote right now, please, before I have a heart uh, attack? I, what you I'm would, trying let's to... Get, let's go okay, with Sajida, it. Sajida, Sajida, give me a second. So I'll spell uh, it for I'm you. Sure. It's, spell yeah, it. It says surah, and it says A-L, and then the second word is H-A-S-H-R. And So this individual here, Omar, I don't know if you heard earlier, he said that this chapter doesn't exist. He says he's never heard of it before. Um, but watch what happens next. It says Ayat 2. That's what I was reading from. Uh, wait, can you spell that? Oh, it's right here. Al-Hashar. 
<laughs> so here's he's he's denying the existence of this chapter in the Quran, which he claims he loves so much. And here I am schooling him, teaching him about an entire chapter of his holy book that he didn't even know existed before. So you can see how educated these TikTok Muslims are about their own religion and how seriously we can take their takes on the Jewish religion as well as their own and the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Just setting the tone for that as we go forward. So what is this verse? It says, this is from Al-Hashir, which is a real book of the Quran. <laughs> it says, he is the one who expelled the disbelievers of the book, the people of the book, which refers to the Jews, um, from their homes for their first banishment ever. You never thought that they would go, and they in the thought that their strongholds would put them out of Allah's reach, but the decree of Allah came upon them from when they never expected. And he cast horror into their hearts so that they destroyed their houses. So the Muslims destroyed their houses and with their own hands and the hands of the believers. So take a lesson from this, O people of insight. So I'm using this as a way to say, look, your own prophet displaced us. You kicked us out of our homes. We pre-existed you living in Medina and you destroyed, decided to kick us out and also collectively punish us as we read here. Um, right, he enslaved us and uh, took our women and children, right? Un uh, killed us, right? So you can read about the Battle of Kaibar here and you can read about the Battle of Kaibar here. So that's the point, is to sort of flip the, you know, the propaganda on them. This is this is a website that uh, explains also what happened in the Battle of Kaibar and emphasizes the fact that the women were, and the children were enslaved, and there were many people who were killed. So the women and the children, when they bring this up, the Gaza thing, Muhammad did some horrible things to women and children as you know, as described here. So where are they coming from? You got to hold them to their standards. It speaks about the people being taken from their homes, basically exiled from their homes. And yeah. it's in the people of the book. And I think that refers to the Jews, according to a tafsir. I mean, I can, I don't know if you, hold that as authoritative or not. This is just what I what I saw. So the tafsir, remember, Goldie was like, I love the tafsir, I love the explanation. So here we have from Al-Hashir, you know, the, the surah that does exist, and <laughs> as opposed to that individual who, who claimed that it doesn't exist and that I was lying, even though he got caught uh, being ignorant or lying, he, he clearly either didn't know or he was lying himself. This book exists. It says the, this chapter mainly treats of the hypocrites' collaboration with the Median Jews against the Muslims, though the Holy Quran says their strategies led to nothing but humiliation and defeat, right? So that Muhammad would enslave our children, marry our wives, um, and obviously kill the Jews. So as, as it says, right, we read this from the historical article where it says, kill every Jew you can lay your hands on. So we have corroborating evidence, not just from the tafsir, not just from, you know, the, the Quran itself, also from academic works, we have our bases covered. So Muhammad clearly killed Jews, he kicked them out of their homes. And he displaced us, and you could argue genocided us if you're using the same standard that, you know, the ICJ uses for genocide in South Africa. So, um, yeah, who's genociding who throughout history? Oh, it, it refers to the people of the book, meaning the Nasarwa. The Nasarwa were the Christians of the land. So this has nothing to do with Jews? No. And I'll tell you why, because the, the, the Jews, the Hebrews, the Hebrews were in the land and the Hebrews after Christ followed Christ. Um, this guy speaks a little slow, so I'll speed it up. The, there was no exile of Jews out of uh, the Holy Land, except by the Assyrians. And those, the ones that were taken out by the Assyrians 
Very, very much. No, this is about the Jewish. This is about Jewish Banu Nader. This is about Jewish people. So this freedom Philistine. Uh, ignoramus is going on about how this has nothing to do with Jews. We just read in the Tafsir that it does have to do with Jews. Um, so first we have this individual earlier saying, this Omar guy saying that the Quran doesn't even have this chapter, al Hashir, And then you have this individual freedom Philistine saying that the people of the book have nothing to do with the Jews and it only refers to the Christians. And then you finally have this Sajeda who's actually having some shred of honesty here and recognizing that, yes, this does have to do with the Jews and that the Jews were killed by Muhammad. So lie after lie after lie, but at least we have somebody who's telling the truth here. So thank you, Sajeda, for actually keeping your lying brethren in check. Or ignorance. Uh, they might be ig ignorant to this, but anyway. But a Jewish tribe. That's what, what I saw according tribe? to the Tafsir, according to Musin Khan. I don't know if you hold him as authoritative or not. But, but. I'm not, I'm also hmm. not, um, you know, obviously a scholar, but yeah. there are d different times when, um, yeah, I mean, if you're not... A, a, acting accordingly you'll be banished like like uh, what is that called the other one the loot loots people right so it's not yes. like just bias against the jewish people it's god is saying that if you don't abide by my laws if you're not a good human being if you're going to spill blood and do all these things you will in fact be banished so what's every, your point every, every my prophet, point is every wouldn't prophet. that be collective punishment against no, the jews no, who lived no, 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 in the no, no, land no, no, no. of no, are no, you no, comparing no. yourself don't to god don't turn it into that, don't mm -hmm. it into that. are you comparing don't, don't turn it into that no they don't like that see because this dispels their narrative when they whine about collective punishment I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy, right? If you're gonna whine about collective punishment here, if you're talking to a Palestinian Muslim about this, then they have to admit that Muhammad collectively punished the Jews. Was every Jew responsible for this? No, then why are you enslaving the women? Why are you you know, doing all these sorts of things? Um, they're gonna justify it. They're gonna double down on it. And that makes them look like hypocrites when they whine about quote-unquote collective punishment when Hamas goes around trying to, you know, kill women and children, and then they say, well, what about the women and the children and the bombings? Oh, what are you getting at? Ghazi Hamad said over and over again he's going to continue to uh, do October 7th, right? He calls it the Al-Aqsa flood, right? This is in the name of Islam. You can't argue any... You can't say that this is about anything else but a jihadi war against Jews. And uh, it's if you're going to say that what Israel is doing is a quote-unquote genocide to defend ourselves from getting genocided, then what are you complaining about? He's threatening to do it over and over and over again. And I made videos about this. You can watch it on my channel. Um, yeah. So let's keep going. To God, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Collective punishment. What are you well, talking like the about? Women and the children who were enslaved. Are you a psycho? There, there's well, no are you a psycho? I mean, Ghazi Hamad is a psycho, right? Look up Ghazi Hamad, right? The le the uh, he's from the Lebanese. Uh, he's senior member of of Hamas, right? I made a whole video about this. Um, the video was this one. Israel is Israel committing genocide against the Palestinians? A TikTok debate. Give that a watch. And I basically use this to demonstrate that this individual here who said on the Lebanese broadcasting station that uh, he was going to do October 7th again and again and again. If that's not a threat of genocide, I don't know what is. He literally said he was going to do it until the state of Israel was dismantled. Let's see if these individuals agree with that sentiment. Oh, guys, 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 hold on, guys. Hang on, let me, I can, I can answer this for this lady. There's never so been... So my name is Yehuda, um, so my name lady, is Yehuda. I'm not the, the one Yehuda asking means that. In Hebrew? Do you the know what it refers to in, in, yes. in the Bible? Uh, wait, 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 well, I'm sorry. Well, you refer to me as a her, and it shows me that you don't have any knowledge. Okay, Yehuda, 
What Hang on believe? a second. I, I have a question you know what, for you. Do you know who Yehuda was in the Hebrew do you, Bible? Do you, wait, do you speak Hebrew? I, do you believe he was a woman or a man? Do you speak Hebrew? Was, is is my Yehuda a name for a man or a woman? Let me ask you that. I mean, it Yehuda ends with an A. A man or a woman? It ends with an A. Okay. What, 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 who was Yehuda? Who was Yehuda in the Bible? Who was Yehuda, he? Yehuda, Yehuda, like, honestly, I don't know if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter right now. So, it, it does. Judea, because if you're going Judea, to speak on Judea, authority Judea, on Yehuda it, means, yeah. If they're going to speak on authority on this subject, as I said, they sure as well know that Yehuda is the name of the fourth son of Jacob, also known as Israel. But they're really just doing this to try to insult me, which is very common on TikTok. And uh, it just sort of shows their character. And you know, the pseudo respect that they're trying to show just to kind of, they don't have any respect for Jews, right? Unless Jews are self-hating Jews who want the destruction of the state of Israel, um, they couldn't care less about you. And they will treat you horribly, just as the Jews were treated in Muslim countries for the past thousand years. So. No, no, you that being Judea. Relax. Judea is the region. My name literally means Judah. He was the fourth son of Jacob, also known as Israel. Okay. This is the name okay, that my brother. parents Okay, but what if we don't so know that? Wait, 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 wait. If you don't know that, then you shouldn't be speaking on this topic, quite frankly, right? If you're going around saying that Jews don't exist or something, or you're making up revisionist history about, you know, this type of stuff, then who are you to even speak on this topic? That's the point. Or you're just a disrespectful person, and you know it just shows a lot about your character. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. very basic yeah, about who you are. We're about to mute him real quick. I, I, I can mute listen, anybody, but I have. But okay, yeah, who does? Right now, I, I can't. I can't even tell. Just let me ask him this question. Khalina Khalid, just respectfully. Just respectfully, let's let freedom go quickly, and then and then that way we can hear to all of you that just saying dope stuff, and I want to hear everything you're saying, even Yahuda. So I have a question for Yahuda. Yahuda, do you speak Hebrew? Speak Hebrew. I don't speak it fluently. Okay. When was the modern day Hebrew founded? Because there was no Hebrew language. So, but the modern day Hebrew. So I pray in Hebrew, and my people have prayed in Hebrew since. Before the no, times your, of your people have prayed the last two thousand years, we your have people, prayed the same. Your people the have same prayed prayers in, in Hebrew, Yiddish. right? Since the your diaspora, people, your people have prayed, have prayed in the Yiddish. Same prayer. So this idiot is going on and on about my people praying in Yiddish. Okay, so if you actually look, and this is something I'm gonna just for anybody who's you know ignorant to this topic. This is from the Talmud. You can go on Safari. So this is speaking about the what is known as the Amida prayer. It says, a Brita cited previously taught the halacha against reciting the text out of order applies to the Amida prayer. The Gemara asks, from where do we derive this? It is taught in a Brita. Shimon Hapakuli arranged the 18 blessings, the Shimona Esrei of the Amina prayer before Rabban Gamliel in their fixed order in Yavne. Yavne, you know, around the time of the destruction of the Second Temple, which pre-existed Israel by at least 600 years, which indicates that there's a specific order to these blessings that must not be changed. They are in Hebrew, right? Now, obviously, the Talmud intersperses Aramaic, but Aramaic also pre-exists Islam by, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, right? So... Arabic as well, right? So this language is a language, you know, if you want a baseline for this, Jesus spoke Aramaic, right? So this isn't something that is, uh, you know, this pre-exists Islam is my point. So Rabbi Yochanan said that it is taught in Brita that the 120 elders, the men of gr the great assembly, which means Ezra, who was a part of the, you know, from the book of Ezra, like, the building of the second temple, and among them several prophets. Literally, this is, is according to the Talmud that these blessings were established by the by the prophets, established the 18 blessings of the Amida in their fixed order, which also shows the order of these blessings may not be changed. Well, guess what? If you go to this online Siddur, the Amida prayer, if you go to the Ashkenaz, 
uh, Nusach, which is the Ashkenaz way of praying, right? You have the Amida and the 18 blessings here. And of course, I guess if you can't read Hebrew, this doesn't mean much to you. However, this is how it is understood according to the Hebrew, right? In the Hebrew, you have the 18 blessings in that particular order. So this is the Ashkenaz version, and then you go to the Sephar, or this is the uh, Edut HaMizrach, right? Any version, Mizrach refers to the Jews who lived in like the Middle Eastern countries, right? In general. So every single version has the Amida, the 18 or 19 blessings as it has been understood um, to add in the one. Either way, they all include the same order of the blessings, no matter where you have been in the diaspora, including Ashkenazim. So anyone saying that Ashkenazi Jews aren't a part of this and we only pray in Yiddish, complete nonsense, complete hogwash. Anyway...